Talk through all of the latest action in the Premier League, and I've got the dream team in the studio with me, Don Atchison and Ian Wright. And there's a reason why Wrighty's got a big smile on his face. We'll come to that later. But first of all, here are the results from Match Week 26. Of course, it's a, a game that's split over two weekends. So here is the latest. As for Friday night football, it was a goalless draw at Molyneux between Wolves and Leicester City. On Saturday, we saw Burnley now register back-to-back -back wins away from home for the first time in two years at St Mary's. They beat them 2-1. Norwich against Liverpool saw Liverpool continue their incredible season beating them 1-0 as for Sunday it was a goal fest at Villa Park Tottenham in the last minute of the game, 3-2. And uh, as for Arsenal against Newcastle, that ended up being 4-0 to Arsenal. On Monday night, we've got an incredible game between Chelsea and Manchester United. So that's to come on Monday. But let's now reflect on the action at Carrow Road. So Norwich against Liverpool, bottom of the table against the top. The mentality of the boys is absolutely exceptional. So um, yeah, I could see it in each of their faces. I was not, nobody was really nervous, okay, we didn't love the game, but we more and more we liked it. So, and you could see we enjoyed it more and more, and then you see saw just um, the direction from a specific moment on was then clear. If one, some, one team will score here, it's us. Yes, they had moments, but even in our protection we were much better, because the counter-attacks were not played, we don't have to, didn't have to defend them in our own box, we won the ball at halfway line. That changed everything, you can immediately accelerate again, and um, these kind of things. So. Um, it's really all about the character of these um, wonderful football players that makes all the difference. Yeah, it was not uh, easy because as a football player, everyone everyone wants to play all the time. But uh, yeah, you have to deal with it. And I go do some treatment and I work hard and I come back. But in the same time, our strong team and the boys we get a great job and uh, yeah, it's that we are we are Liverpool, we are strong team and we're happy with our result today. 25 points clear at the top of the Premier League table. Maybe not the most perfect performance from Liverpool, Don, but a performance mm. of champions for sure. Yeah, and Sadio Mane got interviewed there and he's probably my favourite from the league this season. I just yeah. love everything about him. You know, he's a machine of a player. He seems humble. He just gets the job done. He's a real team player. There's some brilliant team players in the Premier League this season. But he's one that just works tirelessly, back the way when needed. You know, he puts tackles in, he gets assists, he gets goals. And he's just a sensational player, bang in form. Came off the bench to score the all-important yeah. goal as well, Ricey. Well, when, you know, Liverpool, embarrassment of riches, aren't they? And, you know, as tough as Norwich did make it for them, when you... When you see someone like Mane coming on at that stage, then, you know, energised, you know what I mean? And the, the chance he took, he took it so well. You know, people talking about a little bit of a push there, I'm not really sure. That's just, that's, that's what you want. That's like half a chance, really. And he's made something out of it. And that's all you need when you're Liverpool now. You just need to just not lose games. And they've been doing that all season. It's been very tough for them because teams have been making it tough, but then uh, they get it done. Incredible, Great ball from Henderson. Yeah, yes, super and great. he's another assist. player that's been... All really of them seem to I mean, It's hard to pick one, isn't there's it? There's going to be a massive debate. I mean, I've heard all this week about Jordan Henderson player of the year, and why not? But there's so many players in that team squad where you could literally choose. alison has been sensational. You know, Van Dijk. You go through the lot. It'd be hard to pick a player of the season from this Liverpool team, Yeah, I'd, I'd still probably, um, as, as much as Jordan Henderson has done for Liverpool, you know, in the role he plays... I'd still probably go, go for Mane yeah. for what he's done this season. You know, yeah. and that's just because of the, the calibre of player that Jordan Henderson's around, you know. But, like, if it, if it went to Jordan Henderson, it's not like I would say, well, that's disgraceful. <laughs> it's it's like, just, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's my, what it is, yeah. Those, those would be your three, in my opinion, Mane, yeah. Van Dijk, Henderson. And we've uh, obviously spoken about so many records that they've broken across the board this season. There are more records that they are looking like they're about to break. But look, successive wins in English top flight. The record is 18. Mm. They're on 17. There are so many we can just reel off. We were talking about Oh, we were chatting moment. earlier, seems there's some fantastic ones. 103 points out of 105. I think my favourite... in 35 consecutive matches mm. as well. I think my favourite one is they've already qualified for the Champions League and they've only played 26 games. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's my favourite. Yeah, that's, that's it's just because it's silly. Yeah. I know it's unbelievable, isn't it? And they've actually now beaten every single team in the Premier League as well. I mean, it just goes on and on, doesn't it, Righty? Yeah. The, the thing with them is, is that I, I think that off of the back of what Man City's done in the last couple of years, they've kind of unleashed the Liverpool, what, uh, which, what, which are like, they're just like monsters now. They know mm. what it takes. Last, last season, they knew that draws weren't good enough. 
Yeah. And they've started this season knowing draws ain't good enough. <laughs> they've not got draws, <laughs> just got wins. And you, the way they're playing, they are now going to start setting a, um, setting a kind of level of playing that's going to be very hard to match. It's going to be very hard. I'm so looking forward to seeing what they're about next season. I bet you are. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about another game that happened. Uh... To the manager, yeah. giving the players that belief to go on. I trust you. And he, he's changed as well, because when he first arrived, his team was emotional. Because he was emotional. Yes. Yeah. You remember up and down yeah. the bed for two years, he yeah. was jumping all this. Oh, he'd lost his glass. <laughs> the broken glass. Absolutely. No, but yeah, his yeah. team played that way. Do you remember? Yes. They were 2 0 up, suddenly they lost 3 2. Yeah. They were giving goals away. They were playing, really, not with their heads, they were playing yeah. just with their hearts. He has steadied down on the side of the, on the sidelines. He's really calm now yeah. the last couple of years. His team are playing with that same calmness and that same belief that if we don't play well today, you know what? We still win. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the, the Dalgleish and that 80s team had. They didn't have to play well. They knew they could win. And that's the fear that they, they, they've got. They've got a dozen gone. wins by one goal this season. Yeah, exactly. That says it all. And I know that he said afterwards in the interview, he really liked the fact, and you've been a manager, Glenn, he turned around, looked at his bench and went, oh, I like the look of that. <laughs> yeah. I can do, you know, whatever I need <laughs> to do here, I can do here. Yeah. Well, and that's we, tremendous. And we, and we, to be honest, we thought Man City were the only team yeah. that was going to yeah. do that. Over the last few years, you look at their bench, you go, wow. Yeah. He's built, and that's what Dean was saying. He's built mm. this. He's built it in the last, what, four or five years. It's just getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. There's, and the good thing is their contracts, all their contracts are there for yeah. the next two or three years. And players will want to go to Liverpool. Yeah, that's the difference. So they're oh. now, they've done it in a different way to Completely. Manchester City, but you've got to admire them. They really don't. And isn't it great? This is nothing to do with Man City or what's going on with Man City, but isn't it great that actually the football is not predictable, that sport, the life isn't predictable, as you said, Glenn. <laughs> we thought, oh, who on earth is going to beat City over the next yeah. 10 years? Suddenly, so my point being that somebody else now can go, well, Liverpool have done it. Why can't we do it? You know, we have to be able to do it. There is a different way of doing it. Yeah, but there's... Uh, but you have to have brave owners to yes. allow somebody yeah. to the reins in order and to do that. And intelligent managers. Of, of course, and, and, and staff as well. And players have got to be on board uh, like that as well. And the balance that Klopp's got at the moment is just, you know, with, with the young players, he's got the two fullbacks, yeah. best in the country now. And mm. he's got the two seniors that we always talk about, Henderson and Milner. You can see when he looks over his shoulder and he goes, I need a calm head. I'll just bring Millie on. Yeah. Or need to go Anywhere. I'll Play in any of these on. And, and yeah. they just, he just knows that he can trust yeah. his players. Biggest word in football. If you can trust your players, you're so okay. So he brought Martin. Barney, he said, had had two training sessions, but not three, which is why he didn't start. Because he actually said, I can't start him and then take him off. He's not that sort of player. Yeah. Mm. But the way he comes on, yeah. Mane, the impact he's had. You know, we've had the Salah, Mane, Firmino discussion as much as anybody around the world has yeah. had in their homes and their workplaces and so forth. But, I mean, this season, Mane has been out of this world. It's been sensational. He it? It really has. I mean, whether there's a push there or not, but to, to actually bring that ball down after you've just actually just warmed up and come on. You'd only <laughs> just come on there. I'd pull a hamstring bits. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a finish as well. Look, there's there's the... Look, he brings it down with one foot, keeps his balance, and there's just one thing on his mind and a great strike. And uh, that's what he's got from the bench. We're talking about the strength of what he can do. He can rest players. And he's earned that. And I've got to say, with Liverpool Football Club, they've got an underbelly. They've got yeah. these youngsters coming through that you were seeing in the FA Cup. Mm. They're proper players. They're going to be proper players and they're going to get better and better. So everything's rosy in the garden at the moment with Liverpool. I mean, it wasn't a push because it wasn't given. I think we would all say it wasn't a push, was it? It was just mm. the balls up in the air. And, I don't, I just you know, don't it's a contact sport. Mm. I don't yeah. see that as a foul. I think if I gave a free kick against Dion for that, he would have chased me out of Carrow Road yeah. <laughs> along the A14. Yeah. Around the pitch first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but should this have been a penalty? Because I think we all think that Van Dyke was wrestled to the ground by Rub, yeah. who, and the clue is, he's not, never ever looking at the ball, the Norwich man. I know, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange on this, Rub. He seems to have no eyes, for the, no eyes for the ball. You'll see in this situation here, he's not looking at the ball. Van Dyke's got his arm in the air. It will have been checked by the VAR. Well, whether I can't see that, how that's not given, Chris. Well, whether the VAR was thinking that Van Dyke was pulling him down as well, I'm not sure. But listen, if a penalty's given there, I don't think there'll be any complaints. Oh, uh, you it's a pen, isn't it? Like, it's a pen, 100%. Yeah. And I, personally, I think that's why VAR, one of those decisions, was brought in for that type yeah. of thing. Do yeah, it once. Yeah, yeah. Do it once. Nobody does it. 
a little bit like the encroachment now on penalties. Yes, yeah, saw that, didn't we, in the, yeah. in the Villa game with the, the Somme penalty that every Aston Villa player oh, stayed they were very, the, very, they were very clearly well outside the box, weren't and they? I think it would be the same, Chris, mm -hmm. with, this, with this rule. If someone, you know, if it had been given, gone to VAR and they go, no, nah, you can't do that on a football mm. pitch, anywhere in the pitch, that's yeah. a penalty. I think, yeah. Everyone goes, oh, we can't do that. We can't defend properly. Yeah, yeah. Defend properly. Yeah, exactly, I, I, yeah. You know, if you're going to win it, I, mean, yeah, I wouldn't because yeah. I was rubbish in the air. But, <laughs> but I'll, I'll take you on and I'll do Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I did say to Chris, I said to you, Chris, did I do, do, does the referee ever go up to the uh, to VAR and say, listen, I need your help or mm. did I get that long? And do VAR ever get it wrong? That, that for me, is clear and, and clear and obvious mistake that VAR have said, I can't see anything. <laughs> We've all said it's a pen. I've not heard anybody say it's not a pen. I just, as I said to you in the initial mm. comments there, when, when you yeah. look at that, I just don't see any reason why mm. it shouldn't have no. been given as a penalty. Mm. What the thought process was with the VAR, did he think that Val Virgil <laughs> van Dijk was culpable from what we've seen? I don't think so, mm. as I said. Uh, Twitter was uh, damning Norwich with faint praise. And what I mean by that is everybody was saying, I've never seen a team bottom the league play so well. Yeah. Which, if you support Norwich, means nothing to you. But they did play well. really well. They created chances, but... We've seen but this a lot. This is a nil-nil. Yeah. Listen, I've, I've, they, they, they created so many, so many chances, and they just, and they just let them go. You know, you're playing against Liverpool. It's, it's. This might sound silly, but when you're playing against a team like Liverpool, it's easy to play because nobody's expecting anything from you. Teddy hitting the post as well, whether you're looking to cross it or shoot, I don't know. But they, they gave it a proper good go. But when you're down there. You have the licence to just go for it. You really do, especially against Liverpool. No one's expecting you to win. So there's the gap there, Glenn. Now, a team has escaped from a similar sort of position. Harry Redknapp's Portsmouth over 10 years ago. They did make nine signings in January mm. and, they, and they pulled it off. Was, was one of so there's seven, things? I mean, there's 12 games to go. There's seven points from safety. Yeah, well, of course they could do. But not if they carry on missing all these chances. It's one of them, Steve McQueen. <laughs> no, I can't. I just can't see it. I can't see it. I really, and the reason I can't see it is I watched Norwich first game of the season play at Liverpool. Mm. And they were excellent. Yeah, on the just OB like day. We, yeah. Just like we're yeah. talking now. Yeah. They were excellent. Created some chances. Got beat four. And I thought, well, actually, they're to be admired. That's really... But I hope that the manager and the team... They, for them to stay up, they're going to have to pull the reins in a little yeah. bit on certain games when they go away from home yeah. or whatever certain teams are they haven't and I'm I'm afraid I expected them to see them down the bottom three yeah. because not a drift quite like this because they, they do deserve more mm. points than they get but to stay in this league to come up and stay in this league they just for me had to be a little bit tighter in certain parts of the season mm. going away from home then there's other games down where mm. they can go this is a six pointer we can open and play there out and go. show people how we're yeah. going to play and I just felt it was a little bit like watching Fulham a few years back the same thing and they went down mm. and, and it's sad because it's a lovely it's lovely to watch them play that way but on a professional head just pull the reins yeah. Yeah, pull the belt you can't, a couple you of can't do that you can't play that way all the time in yeah. the Premier League because the Premier League players are that good that they'll just see a weakness or one player switch off and they'll just go for the throat mm. and that's exactly what Liverpool did. Mm.